In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can retire early as an independent adjuster, or really any other career, in far less time than you can imagine by following the Jay Leno method, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification, and you'll be in like Flint. <laughs> All right, in a previous video I asked, do you know what two things must be present on a medium wood shake for it to count in your hail test square? And thank you for your answers in the comments. Subscriber Dramatic Reading answered, impact mark and a split. And this is absolutely correct. But let's go a little bit deeper on this to understand why those two things must be present together for a wood shake or shingle to be counted in your test square. Number one, the impact mark indicates that the shake was struck by hail. And this is a distinctive mark, not just any old scratch or scuff on the shake will count. Number two, but the impact mark alone doesn't count. The main thing we're looking for is a broken shake that it's clear was broken by the impact. Can you have impact marks and no split? Yep, but it doesn't count. Can you have splits with no impact mark? Again, yep, still doesn't count. Shakes can split for a number of non-hail related causes, primarily footfalls and weather splitting being the two main ones. Weather splitting is caused by wood's natural tendency to crack and split over time. What causes this? The time and age primarily, moist and dry cycles of the year or even day, freeze and thaw, heat of the summer, so on. Not storm related, right? Shakes can have impact marks and spattering all over them, but if there's no fresh split, again associated with that impact mark, you cannot count it in your test square. Because it's wood, those impact marks will over time weather back in to match the old silvering of the rest of the wood. If you find something questionable, it's kind of a head scratcher, take a couple of really good photos with your phone and text it to your IA manager and let them make the call. Okay, so what can Jay Leno teach us about hitting our financial goals, even including hitting an early retirement? So setting aside the fact that he's a famous celebrity millionaire, there are a few fundamental habits that Jay Leno cultivated from the very beginning of his working life at McDonald's. Number one, he pays cash for everything. It is said that the borrower is a slave to the lender. If you hit financial hard times and the things you own are owned by a bank or lender, then if you can't keep paying your payments, they're gonna come and take that stuff away. So a couple of ways to avoid borrowing. First is to realize that having a lot of stuff isn't necessarily gonna make you happy. Will a gently used vehicle you buy for cash do the same job as a brand new one? Yes. The second is to kind of try to be more disciplined. Save up for those things. Realize that the thing that you buy with money that you've spent months saving for will be far more valuable to you than the thing that you, on a whim, whip out your credit card and buy on the spot. Number two, be discerning with your money. Jay Leno has famously said he never uses valet parking. I honestly don't think he says that because he's trying to save money, but consider that even though you can afford to pay for valet parking everywhere you go, or that you can afford to run through Starbucks every single day on your way to work, consider what else you could have spent that money on or saved it up for. And no, I'm not saying to never do those things or to occasionally indulge in some little luxuries here and there. But if a person spends money on those things all the time and then is worried about how they're gonna fund their retirement, maybe let's work on our priorities. And this goes for new cars, big houses, and big TVs. You're kind of spending your retirement now and I, you have to ask yourself, is that really worth it? It's up to you. And real quick, while we're on this topic, who did you like better, Carson or Leno? Answer in the comments below. And finally, number three, and this is the big one I really wanted to get to. It is said by Jay Leno himself that he didn't live off of or even spend his Tonight Show earnings, which were reportedly as high as $30 million a year. So what did he do with that money? He saved it, which kind of begs the question, what did he live on? Jay lived off the income he earned from doing 150 plus stand-up comedy shows a year, and he saved his Tonight Show salary. Here's Jay Leno's big secret. He always has two jobs, even now. He always saves the bigger income and lives off the lower income. So when Jay Leno got started, he was working at a car dealership and doing comedy at night. He lived off his comedy income when he was just starting out and saved his dealership income, which was higher. When he started making more money in comedy, he kept his dealership job and lived on that income while saving his higher comedy stand-up earnings. Freaking brilliant. So how can you apply this to claims? I've said it in at least one previous video that you need a side hustle. And why did I say that? Because I want you to protect the money that you make all summer long doing cat claims. You don't wanna work all summer 
and live off that money all winter, and then when storm season rolls around again, you're broke. Believe me, I did it for several years when I first got started. Jay's way takes this even farther. You live off your side hustle and you save all of your cat earnings. I'm not gonna sit here and try to second guess what your financial goals might be. But if you're anything like me, while I love running claims and traveling for work and all that, if somebody said, hey, you can keep climbing roofs or retire today and go travel for fun and play golf and make adjuster TV videos, what do you think I would say? So let's run some numbers and let's be modest about this. Let's say in the off season, you can earn enough money to pay your bills. In six months, you and maybe combined with a spouse's income can cover your bills and keep food on the table. So if we take the worst year, you might have running cat claims, assuming that you've got some experience and you're not a complete noob, who's not guaranteed to do very well in your first year, you're up and running and you're bringing home only $60,000 in cat pay. If you were able to save all of your cat earnings at $60,000 a year, in 10 years, you'd have $600,000. And at a safe withdrawal rate of 4%, that's $24,000 a year in interest income. Kind of hard to live off of that, but it could probably be done. You can also pay off your house and reduce your monthly living expenses. But here's the thing, every year as a cat adjuster isn't going to be the worst case scenario. Once you get up and running as a cat IA, you can have a great season where you bring home $140,000 a year. And even though I say to never count on events like Irma and the crazy income people were making on that storm, they still happen. So you get a crazy outlier year where you bring home 225,000, or as somebody just told me, $350,000 in nine months from Irma. I mean, that's, I don't even, it doesn't compute. That's, just, that's a lot of money for anybody. And you save it. Not out of the realm of possibility to have something like Hurricane Irma happen once maybe twice in a 10 or 15 year career. Most really good IAs make quite a bit more than $60,000 a year on average. Otherwise, this job simply wouldn't be worth it. And once again, we're making that in six months, right? Don't think of this as annual income because it isn't. You've got the rest of the year to do whatever you want. No boss, no commute, no emails. I think you get the idea. So let's put it this way. If I told you that you could retire from running claims on the road in only 10 years, but you had to deliver pizza and wait tables and sell roofs and maybe sell Mary Kay for six months out of the year, would you do it? And you don't even have to make that choice because as a skilled, trained, licensed adjuster, you can run daily claims during the off season and potentially make as much as you do on cat. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing this out here. And you know what? If you have zero intention of doing anything with insurance, you can still use Jay Leno's method to reach your financial goals. But if you're serious about making a huge impact on your life and your family's life, becoming an independent adjuster doing cat and daily can really accelerate your savings goals and get you out of the rat race in less time than you can imagine. It is real. Question of the day, for you millennials out there who don't know who Carson and Leno are and any older folks who still stay up watching late night TV, Kimmel, or Fallon? Talk about it in the comments below. Hey, what's up? Thank you everybody for commenting. Hail yes, in an attempt to win some free coffee and treats from Starbucks. So I've got this uh, YouTube random comment picker. So this is how we're going to pick the winner of the gift card. So again, it's a $10 gift card. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to grab this link, which is the link to this particular video where I had the uh, uh, contest going on and now I'm gonna pop it in here and I'm gonna get the YouTube comments so it looks like 33 unique commenters you know what let's do that again because somebody might have commented and then commented with Haley yes so let's do this oh 34 okay so we got 34 now we scroll down here to start raffle and pick random winner so our winner is James Tefalco. Congratulations, James. You have won a $10 gift card to Starbucks. But you know what? Let's do another one. Who is it gonna be for number two? John Kayat. Probably totally butchering that name. Um, Haley yes, what a great service you provide. Congratulations, John. You also win a $10 gift card to Starbucks. But you know what? Let's just do one more. Let's do a total of three. Because why not? All right. Paul Kosky, 
you also win a $10 gift card from Starbucks. So what I'll need for you guys to do is to email me directly at Matthew at AdjusterTV.com and provide me with your, basically I really just need your email address um, and then I will shoot over those gift cards to you. All right, and there you have it. There are three winners of the $10 Starbucks gift card. For much more information about getting started as an independent adjuster, there's tons more great content at adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by hitting the round subscribe button. Wondering what to watch next? Check out these videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. A flea and a fly in a flu were imprisoned, so what could they do? Said the fly, let us flee. Let us fly, said the flea, and they flew through a flaw in the flu.